Alrighty then, uh, we've got it so that when we click on bacon, we go to the home page and we click on recipe, we go to uh, the recipe, um, very nice recipe that, uh, and we've got the, the pages set up. Now what if we wanted to make it so that if we had to make it look prettier, and we do this by using attributes that will change colors, sizes, etc, 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 but now it's not a good idea to do it in just attributes because then when you change the style you have to change it in every single page. So what you do is they use a technology called a cascading style sheet which means you can link multiple pages to a cascading style sheet and then when you want to change something you can change it there. So we're going to show you a couple of ways on achieving this. Now the first way um, we're going to do is we're going to have to create the file and link the file. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Okay, so I've got my um, I've file open here. I'm going to create a new text document. That's the one there. So to create a new text document, right click new text document and you're going to rename it to uh, style.css. This is the best way to do it. Now, now that we've got, I oh, could not long have found it, I guess, so that item didn't actually exist. Uh, all right, so right click new text document. I'm going to call it style. It's not a small style. And that's CSS. You could create multiple different st uh, style sheets depending on uh, how you want to structure your actual web pages, etc. And you'll see um, uh, often uh, content management systems do that. They create multiple different, so you can also just switch between templates quite quickly, or well, even the user can. Anyway, so I've got a style.css. Now, the lovely thing about NetBeans is it allows you to create the link automatically. And the way you do this is if you drag it into your NetBeans and you go into your heading section. Uh, da, da, da. Scroll up, scroll up, go up, have it up. Okay. So when you go into the heading section, you can literally just drag and drop it there, and it'll automatically create the link to your cascading style sheet. So I'm just going to put a comment there to show that this is a link to style sheet. Now, the important part of that is that. Uh, this says that this document is going to be utilizing the style sheet. So all the styles in that uh, CSS is going to exist there, and you would copy that across into every all of your um, documents that you're working with. So in this case, we're working just with these two um, web pages. So we're only going to be copying across the style sheet through this. I'm also going to delete um, my borders and widths, which shouldn't be actually called in here, because that shouldn't be done inside um, my uh, inside the file, because then you have to, if you want to change the size of the way it acts, you'd have to do it in every single page. Um, so to start off with, let's just take a look at what we've done when we've deleted it, what it looks like, so we can keep track of what's that. Okay, so it's gone like this now. There's no border on the table. There's no, um, uh, you can't see anything, and that's the way it is currently. We're going to be doing all the formatting and the styling and the colors, etc., inside the, the cascading style sheet. Okay, so now we actually want to open up the style sheet inside NetBeans. So we drag it across NetBeans. Now I don't want to link it, so I'm just going to put it into this blank area here saying that I want to open it up as a new file. And we'll open up the style sheet. Now the first thing we can do is we can refer to the table tag. So I literally just go table open curly brackets. And that means that I'm going to be applying styles to the table tag. Um, some people like doing it in one line, you can also do it in multiple lines. I'm actually kind of changing my preference on here and I'm going to be doing it over multiple lines and I will try to breathe in between what I'm talking about. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say with basic property, it's the same way as you would in your attributes with, but now instead of equals you use a full colon and then I'm going to say instead of saying a specific number, so instead of saying 300 pixels, I'm actually going to do something slightly different. I want to say 90% which means it's going to be taking up 90% of the screen. So when you maximize and minimize it, um, it, it doesn't change. I mean, it, it changes as well. The whole size of everything changes. So I'm going to be working with percentage. Semicolon to end off uh, that statement or that uh, attribute. And I'm going to then make a heart as well of 90%. And I'm then going to make a border. Now, here the borders work slightly differently. You would first start by saying border dash width. Um, and the border width I'm going to be setting to 2. You then have something else that you'll need to apply. You need to apply both of these before you'll see it. And the other one is a style. And if you press Control Spacebar, remember um, Control Spacebar is a lovely shortcut. So Control Space. If I'm pressing down on my keyboard, so what I wrote down there when I press my keyboard, Control Space. And you'll see it comes up with a whole bunch of suggestions. And I'm going to go for a bridge just because I can't. Okay, so now we've applied these to the table tag. Now if I go back here, 
um, to my actual physical recipes, which la 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 la, and I press F5, you'll see now the width of the table has changed. Uh, although it is not uh, centrally aligned, it doesn't look that pretty, and it's not, um, but we, the, and you'll see there's a, ta a border around the outside of the table, no longer on the inside, because when you now apply to the table, it's only the table tag, which means it's a whole object. And you'd have to apply specifically, um, let me show you now quickly, you'd have to apply it to the TD tag if you wanted to do something more specific. So now if I wanted to do these, these, these borders, for every cell, you would apply it to the TD tag, and then every cell would uh, have that border. And that border is not that pretty, but you can see now there's a, a border around every cell. It's still looking pretty ugly and it hasn't got the way we want to. So let's let's try and modify this a bit and let's try get this a bit better. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I want to align the table in the center because at the moment now I'm using a percentage sign. I want it to be aligned vertically center and horizontally center. So let's try get that right. Um, and here I'm going to go back to the I'm just going to close it inside the center tag. And let's see if that works. And that's in the recipe side. And then in the index, I'll do the same thing. Let me pause the video. Okay, let's see how that goes. Uh, boom, F5. Okay, so it's not horizontally centered enough, if I'm correct, which I very well may not be. Um, in your style sheet, you have an option of vertical align. And then I could perhaps go middle, I think. Middle. See if that affects anything, but I might actually have to apply it to the body. See, that didn't do anything. Um, so, what I'm going to do is modify. I want to modify another tag, and the tag I'm going to modify is the body. And the body, I'm going to apply this there, because obviously this is not applying to the actual uh, contents I'm wanting it to. I'm wanting it to apply to the table is inside the body. So the body must be vertically aligned centered, so everything inside the body will be aligned in the middle, if that makes sense. That's my theory. Let's see if my theory works. F5. <laughs> Fail. Okay, so vertical alignment's not working in the middle. Alrighty, I'm doing a little bit of uh, digging into this. It's actually, uh, it doesn't like vertically aligning tables, and alignment is actually quite a complex concept inside. And in step four, we're going to be going through layouts, and layouts deals with divs, etc., and how to uh, get a table to layout. So we'll worry about the centering a bit later. For now, we just got the border and the TDs and stuff like that, and um, just to work with that, and we're going to work on size and that kind of stuff. So for now, we're going to work with that. So I might as well make the height of the table 100%. Um, now, I'm not liking the way I'm setting out these TDs in these individual cells, so I'm going to be uh, manipulating it a little bit. And to do this manipulation, um, we want to do specifically individual cells to have different styles. And to do with, deal with that, you deal with classes. So um, before I do that, I'm going to create a background color. Now, you can also choose a background image. It's a little bit more complicated. You have to refer to your URL to the position it's in and how it's going to repeat, etc., etc., et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you're repeating areas. You can mess around with that. It can be quite cool. Um, but you need an image that can duplicate nicely. Um, so for example, you can choose a nice small image um, that as long as it's when it's placed next to each other or around each other, it would look nice. That is the big thing with that. But you can do that, and that can look uh, quite fancy if you do that. I'm going to work with the background color. Now, I'm going to first just start off by saying red, like we did in previously when I just said BG color inside the attribute. We're going to work with that. And you'll see there this BG color red, it's bam in your face, it's red. And you can see I haven't got any borders around here, but that's not what we're dealing with right now. But I don't like this red. How do we deal with more specific colors reds? And how to do that is I want to show you by using a um, my, the program I like. I like using a GIMP, which is GNU Image Manipulation Program, which is an open source um, image editing app. Now, on any color has what's called an RGB spectrum, which means there's a percentage of it which is red, there's a percentage of it which is green, and a red percentage of it which is blue RGB. Um, you also get uh, HAs and all this stuff when it got to do with transparency, etc., etc. But we're not going to be dealing with that right now. Now, inside here, we've got. I'm opening up the image of bacon, and there's a whole bunch of different colors in there. 
Now inside your, uh, which I've lost now, is my um, single window mode. Yeah, okay, single window is cool, but I, I've lost my toolbox, which has the tools in it. Uh, show toolbox. Go go gadget toolbox. Okay, I'm gonna have to figure out how to. Uh, oh, there we go, toolbox. Sweet. All right. So inside there, you'll have what's called the color picker, which is this one over here. Um, if you, I don't know if you guys can see that very well. Let me make this a proper size anyway. Um, you'll see inside GIMP they have what's called a. Uh, pen. So here is my color picker. And inside my color picker tool, I can pick whichever color I want. So in this case, I want to pick this weird orangey gray color. Um, and at the bottom of this toolbox, which is now way too tiny, uh, you'll see that it shows the colors at the bottom. When you click on this, and the color that you've got, you'll see it comes up there with an HTML notation. And that's got to do with the red value, the green value, the blue value. So for example, if I had completely only R, no green, no blue, it would just come up with a nice solid red. If I came up with just green, would come up with purely green um, and only blue would obviously only come up with only blue and obviously everything from there is a combination of them and this works with three bytes because each red is three bytes green is three bytes sorry it's one byte sorry green is red is one byte and so forth so it's 255 255 255 and obviously 255 255 red green and blue full would be every single color which is then white okay so back to the whole picking the color I want uh, okay, this is going to be ugly no matter what. Alright, um, it will come up with the HTML notation here. So C4622E, if I copy that and I paste it across into um, into my cascading style sheet color. So I'll put there a hashtag in front to show that it's a color. I mean, it's a hexadecimal code. And in the hexadecimal code, I'll place that. And now, when I go back to my um, actual document, you'll see that the color of the actual uh, page or the table becomes what I specified it to be. But now we want to specify more directly with hearts and etc. of individual rows and cells. So you see how I've applied it to a table. Now you, you've got to realize if I go control space bar, all of these are items that I can modify here in the table. There's tons. You guys can mess around with it, look at it, Google it, figure it out. There's, I'm not going to go through every single one, quite frankly, they all work the same. You say which item you want to change and then you give it a value. So I'm not going to go through all of that. But what I'm going to go through is the next concept and that's actually how to specify more specifically in each individual rows. So I'm going to first of all start with my first row and I'm going to say uh, class is equal to R1. My first cell, I'm going to go class is equal to R1 C1. I'm just going to do the, the following of each of those tables because, quite frankly, um, so class is equal to R2. Okay, I'm not going to record this because, quite frankly, I'm just applying classes. So all I've done, I should have zoomed in for that. All I've done is I've said in my class, in my tag, I've given it an attribute of class. I've said equal to whatever value, and I've done the same here. So all I'm doing is for every single cell I get into, I'm going to give it a class name. So I can refer to individual items. And now, before I go on to that, you might potentially want to make more than one cell have the same value. So you might want to name them the same thing. So for example, my um, uh, cell with my image bacon in it, I might want to put this as class is equal to uh, R to C link. So this is my C link. So I'm just actually going to call it, I could just call it C link. So that's my cell containing my links. And then also my recipe also contains my links. So I'll also give this one the same class names, cell link. Um, and you can do that for multiple of them. Uh, I'm not going to finish this directly now. I'm just going to show you how roughly to do it. Is if you now go into my um, style, I can then say R1 height. Sorry. Dot R1. So now if I go dot R1, I'm referring to anything with the class R1. So if I zoom in on this, you'll see that it says dot R1, open curly brackets, close curly brackets. And dot R1, I want uh, the uh, row, we can only really specify height. I'm wanting the first row to only have a height of 20%. So let's make it 15% of the page. I want my dot R2 to have a height of uh, let's give this a little bit less. This is going to be, let's make this 20, let's make this 40% uh, 
instance method and my R3 will also have 30%. Well, technically, I can actually make this as both. So I'm going to put there, I'm just going to give both of my rows an R2 value. So here we've specified the row values um, and what the heights of the rows will be. And the next thing I'm going to do is I would, for example, say they see links. So this is what my C link would look like. And I would then maybe want it to have a border uh, width of 4. Let's make it 8 to make it very really prominent. And then let's look at a border style of spacing of uh, inset, for argument's sake. Okay, so now we've got that. Let me just apply the dot r two two here. Now you got to realize I haven't made index to have these same things, and I'll get into it with regards to structure that you when you're planning this. So so now that we've done that, normally what would happen is you design one common look feel of everything and just leave the content blank. You then copy and paste this into all your various different pages and then just change the content to them because you want a common look and feel anyway. So you would have set up all of this on the first one and then you would have copied it across. But right now, because I already have two and now I'm adding the classes in, it's going to be a little bit of copying and pasting, which is a bit annoying. So now if I um, try F5 this, you'll see the row has changed. Uh, my TDs, this one and this one, still hasn't got a border. So there's something going wrong here and I think it's because C link I've got around that one the capital C, capital link, and I've got C link over here. Now it's case sensitive, so you see C link had a small L over here. So that's very important. I'm happy I made the mistake. I made it so that you could learn. <laughs> Whoop, more mistakes. Let me, <laughs> let me figure it out, then I'll get back to you. I figured out the error. I'm just only paused for a couple of seconds. I didn't put a dot in front of the C link. I'm sure you guys spotted that. My bad. All right. I still haven't tested it. Let's see how embarrassing this is. Okay, yeah, yeah, so it works. Okay, so we've got it looking a bit better now. And the video just shows us how uh, to link the files into here. So dot, uh, use dot, and then it refers to it. I'm going to make a finish this, and I'm going to then ask you guys to actually code this and create um, this to look in the way I want it to look. And then you guys can, when you're doing your project, you can use your own uh, versions to mess with that project. Oh, yeah. Um, hope this tutorial has helped. A uh, quick overview. Uh, dots refer to classes, so if you, or you could just refer specifically to the cell. Inside here, you would give each of the values a class, and you'll work with that. Jolly good show. What, what? Goodbye.